looking to improve your life, brush up on your personal growth techniques, you are in the right place. Welcome to Life's Little Lessons with your host, author of Designing Your Own Destiny, Kevin A. Dunlap. And welcome back, everybody, to Life's Little Lessons. This is a show that helps you, the entrepreneur, to either begin your business or to get the confidence to also scale your business. And today's I have a guest that is going to be probably one of the things that you really, really need to learn a lot about. And this is a gentleman that is, is an SEO expert. The name of his company is called Rising Above SEO, and he's a local here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I know this gentleman, again, through the Mastermind, and I've talked about Masterminds in quite a few of the shows. So if you don't already have a Mastermind, go ahead and get one because you'll find some amazing people. And it was at the Mastermind that I actually found this person. His name is Richard Gilman. Richard, welcome to our show today. Thank you, Kevin. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure, sir. And could you tell me a little bit about what is it that you do and why is it that you do it? Because I know you have a company called Rising Above SEO. What is SEO and why are you doing this? SEO is search engine optimization. And what I did is I chose to go into this field because there was a lot of people and a lot of hardship for me when I was finding out in the very beginning on how to do this uh, type of business. So there's so many different people offering SEO, so many different options that business owners have to choose from, but it gets really confusing. So what I did is I was finally able to find someone that was able to help me in the very beginning learn how to do this. So when I first started, there was a company that I was paying for their service, actually trying to figure out how to do this. And come to find out they really didn't know what they were doing. So I was just giving them money, wasting my money and um, constantly in the battle of trying to rank things on the internet. So I just kept str- struggling along, kept going. And uh, in the meanwhile, I was buying different websites, trying different things for myself to be able to rank on the internet with a little bit of success, not so much success. So I really wasn't that confident in being able to go out and do that for somebody else's business. And um, finally, I it was able to come across a community online that I'm still a part of because they're the ones that helped me learn how to do SEO. I couldn't learn how to do it in school. It's not something that they have a college course for. So it was something that I was either learn on myself or find someone that could actually help me learn how to do it. So that's what I ended up doing. And with their assistance and it's just a really great community that I'm part of online. They're the best SEOs in the world and we get all our information from there, different algorithms that Google's coming out with different um, strategies that are working different strategies that aren't working that used to work and it's just been a big process to be able to get through and be able to help people is really what my ultimate goal was because you could there's so many different offers you see them online like a hundred dollars for seo and people pay for it and then what do they get they get heartache and sadness because they just spent a hundred dollars and didn't receive anything. So it was something that I really wanted to get good at so that I could help business owners be able to get that traffic and return an investment that they've heard about that SEO can provide to their business. Right. Cause a lot of people talk about SEO. I mean, every, every person has an online business or does anything online, they hear SEO. And, and I mean, it's such a broad, big animal because it's, I know it's, it stands for search engine optimization, which uh-huh. means that you're actually, you're optimizing search engines like Google or Bing or Yahoo or something like that. But for the most part, the big player out there is Google, correct? Mm-hmm. Correct. Yep. And now we would talk about algorithms and things like that. And I know for an example, one of the big things that in the past that was really, really big was you, it was something known as your meta tag or keywords that you were using your meta tag. Now uh-huh. things like that no longer really matter. Is that correct? It depends. You want to make sure it's optimized correctly on your actual website. So when you're looking at the metas, what you want is, let's say you have an image of something on your website. You want to make sure that you tell Google what that image is about. Mm -hmm. 
So um, I actually do have a, a software I use to analyze a website quickly, and it shows me, hey, this person doesn't have uh, a name for their title. It's just this with a whole bunch of numbers. And Google, when it looks at your site, it's looking for anything relating to the content, images, videos, um, all of that stuff to find out relevancy for the topic you want them to rank you for. So when I go through that, another thing too is a lot of people don't know that underscores, you don't want to have underscores in the titles for your name. Google doesn't like that when they're going through and searching. It, I don't know what it does to their search spiders that when they go through and search your website, but they don't like that. So that's one thing maybe not a lot of people know, but you want to make sure if you're going to have something like that, you want to do a dash instead of an underscore. But yeah, the, you want to have some type of description telling Google what your pictures are about because they can't just look at your picture right now and say, hey, this is a cat or this is a dog. They look for the content and actually be able to tell what that picture is about. So how do, how do you write the description it well, with your pictures is it, is it something you do on your computer before you upload it to your website assuming um you can upload because the the reason i'm saying this is there's a lot of people out there that don't know really the difference between say a wix website a wordpress website or any of those other software utilities out there so they may be hiring would they, would they be hiring you to help them build their website or are you more to be optimizing the website after it's built I do more of the optimizing after it's built um, because there's people that I hire out for that do different coding. If someone needs a simple website, I can assist them with that, but that's not something I like to focus on because the SEO part is basically helping that structure after the website's built. So then, um, like you were saying with how do you um, get the description on there, what happens is when you have some type of picture um, you want to title it that picture maybe a few keywords that you actually want Google to recognize that picture for then when you actually upload that picture to your website you want to that title will already be there with your keywords and then you want to go into the description of the picture just write a little bit of words in there telling them additionally what that picture is about that's going to help you with your pictures on your website so you just be typing it like a sentence or something like that? Yeah, just like a sentence with a few words telling. It doesn't have to be the same keywords. You can use other keywords in relation to what the keywords you used before for the title to actually tell them what that picture is about. Okay, so are you, let's say if I came to you with a five-page website, I've got my main page, my About Me page, my Contact Us page, uh, and then about what it is that I'm selling or doing. So your basic five-page website, mm -hmm. would you be, let's say, a one-time person that will go there and, and optimize it and then they, they go on their merry way? Or is this something that is that has to be updated on a regular basis? And I'm not talking about blogs. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> So if they have a, a one-page website, and um, are they wanting SEO service? Is that what they're wanting? Yes. Or are they just want, okay. So I'll take a look at their website, and generally if they're not changing anything, I'll go through and say, is Google going to recognize this website for whatever category that they want to focus on? So uh, for example, let's say we got a dentist website, and the dentist comes to me. He's got a five-page website for this example, and he's talking about implants. He's talking about braces, he's talking about teeth cleaning, and he's got his main page and then maybe a contact page. So I'll go through each one of those pages and verify that the content that's being talked about on those pages, the contact page must talk about the doctor and his office because that's going to be relevant to contacting them for the office. Implants, we're going to want to talk about different things, possibly within the cleaning realm all the way to the implant saying, well, now if you need implants, then this is the and what you need to talk about for the content on that page as well as the teeth cleaning and then the main page is going to talk about like just the business in general usually what that'll do so i'll go through that one time make sure it's all showing all that information and then what happens with that with the seo side of it first we do 
on page, which was making sure everything on the page is going to be relation to what we're going to link for off page SEO. So there's two different types on page will be that one time, unless they're continuing to change things off page is where we go through and then we create relevancy with other websites so that the search engines will see that what the website is and what it's talking about. These other companies are also giving credibility for that website as well. Okay. Wow. So there, there is a lot involved in more than just, uh, so you spend a weekend on somebody's uh, website. There's a lot more involved than it's possible. Yeah. It, depending on how big it is and what they want and, um, a lot of it. So after we do like the on page, the off page is a continual basis. And the reason it's continual is because you don't want to be just shoot a whole bunch of links at it because Google will see that as like spam. Okay. Whenever you do that. And um, I actually had a situation that we can talk about a little later with a, a, a doctor I was working with where website got spammed and it was really a hard task to get that off of their website, but we, we did it. So, <laughs> but you want to continually create relevancy every month and generally SEOs, depending on the com competitive competitiveness of the keyword, it's going to take anywhere between, six, nine, 12, 18 months or longer, depending on how competitive that keyword is that the client actually wants to uh, rank. And could you tell us a little bit maybe about the importance of changing your content on your website on a, should you be changing that on a regular basis or, or should you be, the, the reason I'm asking is um, a lot of people out there, myself included, are, creating websites then we go out there and we also create blogs or in my case, a podcast with a, you know, with a verbal description. Uh -huh. it, does that help with SEO by constantly adding new content to your website? It does. You can have your main pages and those don't really, really need to change. But when you have something like a blog that people are going to continually come, come to, that's going to help with getting traffic to your website. So when you've got constant, evolution on your site and not just the same thing all the time. If people are visiting your site and they see the same thing every time, but they keep coming, that's okay. But a blog assists you in getting those people coming, assists Google and being able to index those new blog pages that you've got. And it's just showing Google with a constant flow of information coming into your site about what you want them to rank you for. It's really helpful in being able to give you that authority in your niche that you're focusing on. Okay. So, cause that's, that's what I've been, I've heard this for a long time. I just want to make sure the audience was aware of that, that if you've got a business, um, and I'm not talking about you're doing this on Facebook. I'm just, you're talking about doing this on your actual website yes. is that you have to constantly be adding new content to it and then putting your backlinks of your blog all over the place as well so that people can come to you that way. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It creates that relevancy so that they, let's say if you do have a Facebook account and you share your blog under your Facebook and you got a lot of followers and then they come to your website or if they're coming to your website, looking at your blog and then going to Facebook, creating that traffic both ways is really helpful as well. Okay. Oh, fantastic. And, and so you said how long you've been doing this for? This company I've had for two years. I, in the evolution of my business, it's been about four years to actually get to this point. Okay. And so why, what drives you to doing this? I know you were saying a little bit earlier, but uh, is it that you just want to see other people uh, succeed? You're, you know, why this, why this one area? Yeah, this one area is because it, in the very beginning, it was such a difficult task. And I'm somebody who likes to go for the difficult and try to make it possible, <laughs> even though it might seem impossible. <laughs> so I re that was really the main goal in the very beginning. Then after I started achieving those rankings and getting those websites on the search engines on page one and seeing my customers look at me and say, wow. Uh, they might have tried something else before, tried another service, tried um, Google AdWords, which they get on the first page for a while, but when you stop paying Google AdWords, you're not on the first page anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a temporary thing until you stop paying. So, but getting those businesses on the first page, seeing that reaction, and now they're benefiting from that because once they're on the first page, it doesn't take as much to keep them on there. So the return on investment goes up and then they're a lot happier with the service that was provided because now 
they're not paying as much as they were before, but now they're achieving better results because constantly doing something is going to continue helping them with their rankings. So it's just being able to help those businesses get what they actually wanted to pay for in the first place. Being okay. able to provide that for them. And you've had, obviously, uh, you've had a lot of successes. And now who, who would you say is your target audience? Who, who would you, um, who, what kind of people do you look for? I look for people that are in the medical industry or the lawyer industry. Those seem to be really good clients for SEO. I also, those are my main uh, target niche area for clients. Um, I'll also help different companies, let's say, if they want to get an analysis for their site, but maybe it's not feasible to get, um, to pay me to do their SEO. I like helping those clients as well because it gives them that good idea of what they want to look for in their business. So it's being able to help that business owner um, if maybe it's not a feasible option for them because return on investment, unless they're willing to pay, unless they want to pay for it, then it, that term return on investment might not be the best option for them with this form of marketing. So a lot of clients that are high um, dollar niche uh, clients that receive um, clients that come in and it's just a lot of money at one time is generally a good, good client for this. And when should somebody really start focusing on SEO? I mean, if I'm just, if I'm just starting a business, I just bought a domain name. Uh, mm -hmm. When does SEO become important? You really want to start that right in the beginning. And the reason is because when you get a brand new website, there's something that's called domain authority. Um, and what domain authority is, is it shows, um, for example, your brand new website starts at a one and your Google is at a hundred. So, they're a lot more powerful in the niche that they're in with google.com, of course. They're relevant to almost everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> and your brand new website is a one, so Google doesn't know what to do with that website yet. So what we do is we create a foundation for the website just to show Google that the brand is really important. So focusing on the brand first is is key whenever you're doing SEO for a website. And then after you focused on the brand, then you branch out and you start doing other things to create relevancy for different topics. So in the very beginning, it's important because if you start from the beginning, a year later, you could already be ranking for what it is you want to be done. But you've also, let's say you built a pretty website, you put a lot of really good content. A lot of people want to go and just make a really pretty website and put great content on the site and then start SEO maybe six months down the road. But it's kind of reversed that way because now they're six months behind where they could have been with the SEO for their website. Now, is it ever too late to get started or? or? No, it's, it's not. It's just going to take a while for that business. And I just make sure and um, frame someone correctly knowing that, okay, when you start this, it's going to take this amount of time for us to get on page one. Just so they know, uh, if you would have started six months ago, we could have cut six months off of that time frame. But now we just start here and it's going to be a year from this point or 12, not 12 months, but 14 or 16 months from this point, whereas it could have been minus that, minus six months of when you actually came to me and started working with me. Okay. So, so, okay. That's, that makes a lot of sense. Cause, and I know if you, you were talking about working with doctors and, and attorneys, there's, those are going to be inundated. I mean, if you just type in, we're both in Las Vegas, Las Vegas attorney, mm -hmm. you're going to the get. Competition is unreal whenever you look at those guys. <laughs> so you have to really stand out. So that's, that's where you're helping. Right. And once, let's say we're doing SEO for that um, attorney and he gets on the first page, then we can start focusing on conversion because now he's getting people to his website and now we can start focusing on converting those people to actually paying clients for that business. Now, would you work with the people that are not attorneys or let's say, would you work for say a bookstore or an accountant or something? Yes. Like I would help them. The main thing that they have to do is they have to fill out what's called a discovery form. So when you go to a doctor or you go to a, a dentist or any medical professional or even an attorney, you have to fill out a form to let them know your current situation, mm -hmm. what's wrong with you and maybe where you want to go and whatever, let's say if an attorney, what's the projected outcome that you want to achieve with this uh, project. So they come in, they fill out the form because I need to know what the client knows 
currently about SEO, what's their past experience, what they, um, what's the return on investment for each client in their business, mm-hmm. and then what's the idea that they have about SEO and what they're looking to achieve with this form of marketing. Because that's what it is. SEO is just another form of marketing for a business to be able to get that digital marketing side of it accomplished so that the business can actually rank online for whatever keyword it is that they want. And how often does is Google, since Google is the heavy hitter out there, how often mm-hmm. does Google change their algorithms uh, that you've noticed? <laughs> It really depends. They'll do th- what they'll do is they'll do major updates. So right now there's eight major updates that they've done within the past few years, and that's like a finalized version of whatever algorithm they do. But there's sometimes algorithms that they'll do that make all the heavy hitter businesses on page one of Google, and everybody's like, "What's going on?" Right? <laughs> it's like something that they're testing, but then they realized, well, now all these other businesses aren't going to get the credibility that they deserve. So then they change that algorithm. So it could be every few weeks, it could be a few months, it could be, it, and sometimes it can be a day-to-day thing where they're just tweaking things here and there to see if it actually works for that, and then we'll see them change it back. So it's like, oh wait, that's really not what we wanted to accomplish here because it just wipes out all these small businesses. So right. they change that a lot and just because it worked today doesn't mean it's going to work tomorrow (laughs) exactly so that's one of the reasons that I'm in the community I'm in because we've got people constantly testing things and got so many different test websites out there so that when something happens we almost know immediately after it happens somebody will come up with an update and say hey this is what happened and we'll be like oh thanks for letting us know so we're that we're, we're months ahead of the curve of what all these other companies are trying to accomplish so that we can shift things immediately for our clients to actually benefit them against the competition. So it's kind of like a ripple effect that you have out there. You, you right. When that, uh, let's say, boulder falls into the water, you're, <laughs> you've got your sensors right there because it's, it's this, you notice a sudden change versus, let's say, I'm trying to do my own SEO um, and I'm not going to see those, uh, those ripples. Correct. Right. It's, it's, that's the benefit of being part of that community. So that's one thing that I notice is having those mentors and having those people that have more experience than I do, just having that business relationship with them helps me jump my progress even further. And like you said, keep up with that effect so that the ripples that are happening to other people that are trying to do their own SEO, they catch on to it a few months later where we're already ahead of the game in that manner. Right, because they may not even notice, like say their calls have gone down or they may not notice that the number of page visits that are getting on the website because they're not monitoring it. Right. And then they're just starting to fix this. Hey, what's been going on? I've not really had really any good deals in the last two, three months. <laughs> exactly. What happened to all my clients? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and, and they would be out there just trying to guess, you know, like, well, maybe I need to do more Craigslist advertising or maybe I need to go and start writing blogs or maybe I need to, they may not know what's actually is going on out there. Exactly. And uh, the, what's cool about Google Analytics, so anybody that's got a website needs to have Google Analytics on their website. Um, the reason is because when something is wrong with your site, Google Analytics will tell you. They'll send you a message saying, hey, there's something wrong here with this web page, or there's something wrong with this content on this page, or something like that. So they'll tell you when a problem happens before they actually penalize you for that problem. Okay. I didn't so know that. Yeah, so I wanted to make sure everybody knew that. Whether you have an, a person that's doing your SEO or not, have Google Analytics because they're the heavy hitter in the market. They're going to tell you where your traffic's coming from. They're going to tell you different issues you're having. And that's one thing that is very helpful, and it's free. <laughs> to be able to help you with your business, your website. And, and I would agree. So if those of you that are out there that are listening to the show or watching this video, um, go to Google Analytics. I guess just do Google Analytics. I think it's analytics.google.com is actually what it is. Yeah. And create, uh, create your account. You'll get some, uh, let's call it a script. They'll give you a little bit of coding uh, to a specific um, UA number, which is, I forget what UA stands for. And, the, and you put that in your footer of your page, correct? That's, that's scripting yeah. that code? Mm-hmm. 
So what that would do is, um, because I don't want to get too technical here, is by putting it into your footer every single time you have a new blog or have a new thing on your, let's say, a WordPress site, you automatically have that, that tracking code on there. Right. And then that'll actually keep track of all where the traffic's coming from. Okay, so uh, by just adding that the stuff onto your footer, that will be in all of your uh, on all of your pages. Right, and there's actually if you have WordPress, there's a plugin you can use that's really good as well. If you just look up Google Analytics, and you enter that code into there, it'll automatically put it on your website. Really? Yes. So you don't have to know any kind of coding or. or Nope. And it makes it really helpful to the person that's not familiar with all that code stuff, because now you don't have to go into uh, know a little bit of HTML, go into the back end code of the WordPress website and actually enter that on there. So that's one thing I really like is WordPress. I, I like WordPress and that's probably about 99% of my websites that I have and that different clients that I work with have because it's just so versatile. The security is so good on the website now and they're constantly doing updates and um, it's just not like it used to be where hackers could go in and hack you really bad and just crash your website like it used to because now WordPress is getting such good security on there. Plus there's additional plugins to use for that. So I'm a proponent of WordPress. I do have a custom website, but since I don't know any code, it's difficult to actually enter <laughs> all <laughs> the different things on there. So that's why I like WordPress a lot better. <laughs> and, and that's good that you say that because uh, one thing about uh, coding, and I know just a little bit of coding because I used to build some of my own websites uh -huh. and, um, and I mean, I'm, I'm by no means am I a programmer, but I do know a little bit of coding. And one of the things you do have to be careful of is the less than greater than, because that's what that's, that's where the code actually goes inside. Uh -huh. And you, if you were to get that, it's called a script uh, from Google Analytics, which is probably about 12 lines of, of vertical lines long. Mm -hmm. You can you want to be careful that if you do go there and you're putting in into your footer is that you're not putting that in the middle of another script. Correct. So you cannot just randomly just put it in there. You have to know something. <laughs> right. And I've actually, I've done that a few times where I was like, let's see what happens now. <laughs> and then it just messes it up. So, but I remembered where it was. So then I took it out. <laughs> yeah. So that's good. So uh, for those of you out there that, that are, um, that know a little bit about WordPress, maybe you have a programmer, but you do have access to your, uh, to your uh, back office. So all you have to do is do Google analytics. Put, I would assume put in that UA dash and then your, your, that series of, I think it's a nine characters or nine letter, nine numbers uh, right. into there. And then, then you're, then, then you're golden. Exactly. Yep. Oh, that makes it so much easier. Thank you for sharing that. It really does. For those of you that, uh, <laughs> That one little tidbit of information probably, I mean, it could change your entire world because now you have tracking ability on your website. Right. And that's exactly what you want. And that's why they've created those plugins now is just to make it so easy because that's what you need whenever you're trying to do different things. Because one thing with SEO is making sure that the client is getting traffic okay. um, because we can be ranking but Google also takes people visiting your website and the traffic associated with where it's coming from into, a, into that actual algorithm to actually rank different websites too. Right, because if you are, okay, because so, it's, it's being ranked by the Google, or the, excuse me, the keywords that you're using, possibly your location, because if you're a brick and mortar business, that's going to be different than an online business. And right. if you've got a brick and mortar business here in Las Vegas, who cares if somebody in Orlando is looking at it? I mean, you're not going to get any business from that. Exactly. So like, let's say like a dentist. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, and what Google does too is they take your IP address and they give you search results based on where that IP address is. So let's say for for some people that are using different IP addresses in other countries, if you, uh, because you can do that, right, and use that IP address. So if you're using an IP address in Greek, it's or Greece, it's going to show you results for the Greece, or whatever that city is that your IP address is from. Whereas same thing, if I'm just using my internet in my ha in my home and I'm searching for a good dentist to go visit, it's going to populate the best idea in Las Vegas for me for the best dentist for me to go visit. Okay. So the, what is the IP address for those that don't know? Uh, it's internet protocol. So w I think that's what it is. But what it is, is it is a, a series of numbers that identify the location of where you're at. 
Okay. So it's a series of maybe three, three, two, one, and that is an identifier for the location of where you are. So, um, Kevin, yours would be different than mine because your internet provider has a specific IP for your address and has a specific IP for my address. So we might generate different results in the search engines of where we actually live as well. So and that's going to be depending on, on like your modem or something like that, correct? Yeah, whatever it, they've associated with you at. So um, there's actual different servers that you can actually utilize when you're doing different things on the internet where they have different IP addresses. And if I'd search from those servers, um, it would show me a totally different result than if I'm searching from my server here in Las Vegas. Okay. And that's, and that's mainly just so you could be, so that Google could be more beneficial to you. Correct. Because you, we are all clients of Google, even though we're not paying them. Mm -hmm. They're, they're trying to sell ads and they're trying to make money from all that stuff, which they are. But if they're not producing a good result for their client, us, then we're not going to continue using Google for that search right. and stuff. So, and, the, and I hate to tell you guys out there, you know, that uh, Facebook and Google, they are big time data collection agencies. They want to know, everything and the reason they want to do that it's not to be nefarious or anything like that it's not like they're tracking you big brother it's so they they can get advertisers to be able to get in front of your eyes uh, a lot easier that's the reason for all this data collection right and they're trying to give you that ability because if they can provide you better tracking ability with your ads so as doing like a micro targeting so that you're getting the people let's say that make a lot of money maybe that live in a certain area, maybe that go to a certain event. So if they can give you all of that data whenever you're paying them for their ads, that's exactly what they want to do because now they know for like for me, they know what I'm searching for. They know what I like to eat. They know what kind of cell phone company I have. They know that I, they probably know that I have three kids. <laughs> they probably know all this stuff, right? So if somebody wants to target me for, let's say, toys for little boys, right? Because I have two, two boys, then they'll target me with those ads and they know I could possibly be looking for something for my boys to buy maybe for their birthdays or for whatever holidays coming up. So that allows advertisers to have that um, ability just to develop that micro targeting that um, you pay for when you pay for those ads. Right. Cause for me, is that if I was an advertiser, I don't want to be uh, spending, cause let's say I'm getting, what, what is it? It's like cost, cost per click or cost per uh, uh -huh. impression I, where actually, how many times does it actually show up on a, on a Google search? Right. I don't want to, me as the advertiser, I don't want to be spending money on people that are not in my target market. Exactly. So a lot of people think, hey, I got a lot of people that I'm looking for and, and that I'm paying for this ad to go to. But in reality, you're not probably not targeting down enough when you're mm -hmm. doing that. So a lot of times what I'll do when I do SEO for a client is if they're already paying for like AdWords or something like that, I'll tell them continue paying for that, but incorporate organic SEO into your plan so that you're continuing advertising because uh, you're always going to want to do some type of advertising because maybe you're not ranking for a keyword yet, but you're working on it. But you want to incorporate both of those in there so you're getting the benefits of paid ads as well as organic traffic. So there's a lot of work to that's done behind the scenes that most people are probably unaware of. Right. <laughs> which is, which is why they need to hire a professional like yourself. Cause yes. Yeah. <laughs> I can keep track of all that stuff and they don't have to worry about it. They can keep operating in their business, doing what they're good at. It's really what it, it's like an opportunity cost. Just, me doing my work to help them generate the traffic for their business and then providing that service that their business is all about. Okay. Well, there's, there's a lot to uh, digest here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People say SEO and they almost say it you know, kind of out of the blue, almost like, like breathing or whatever, but they don't really realize just how, involved it is yes it is a very involved process because like we were talking about it takes months of work to be able to get that client on the first page so when you search for something you see somebody on the first page you're like all excited you're like that's where i want to be right but then when you talk to somebody you're like oh that's going to take me a while to get there <laughs> <laughs> right wow yeah 
because like you said, it's not an overnight thing. This is not an overnight sensation. This is a, a history that you have to build. Correct. Yes. Okay. So um, let me go ahead and go into some of the, your successes and things like that. So you say you've been doing this for two years. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you were first getting started, what would you say were some of your early successes? How, what would, you, what would you, you determine was an early success for you? Early successes for me in this type of business is actually being able to rank websites. So what I was doing is I was getting um, brand new domains with different topics in in attempts to actually rank them on the search engines. So um, after finding this group that I'm with, I started doing that stuff, creating the relevancy, creating that foundation with just um, that market that I was in and then seeing the results actually happen. Now, were these actual businesses uh, that that you were targeting or these more like test businesses? These were more like test businesses. And a lot of it, sometimes I would focus on like affiliate marketing uh, because with affiliate marketing, I'm doing the same thing for an affiliate marketing uh, product that I'm doing with somebody's real business. So I would take somebody that already had a product that was already selling and then I would make my own website and rank that and then sell that product from my website. So being able to rank those websites is really because it's my own little test website that I could do. It's not somebody's business that if I mess it up, then it's going to crash and burn, which is really bad. If you do that to a client's website, (laughs) they they don't seem to be too happy when something like that happens. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, just being able to do that and finally achieving those results that I really knew were possible but hadn't achieved yet. So once I started achieving those results, started building my confidence in being able to actually help other people do the same thing. Okay. And that's good that you're you're kind of like paper trading. You're, you're just doing it to see what would work. Now, obviously, um, I mean, not obviously, I will assume when you were building those sites, building their ranking, those were actual, let's say products on there or somebody else's that you were just helping to sell just to, make sure just to test out the SEO techniques um, on your own. Right. Because if for some reason I did something wrong, then that all that happens is that that website goes away. It doesn't hurt that person's product. It doesn't hurt any of that stuff. It was just, it only makes that one little website that I created so that I know, okay, don't do that again (laughs) because Google doesn't like that at all. (laughs) Well, because the, the thing is, if you were doing, like, say, fake products, then you're you're kind of misleading the people coming to your site. But the thing was, you were actually promoting real life stuff, but through another company that uh, or domain that really wasn't a viable business. Right. Exactly. And yeah, I didn't want to um, actually try to sell like a fake business or a fake product. I wanted to make sure it was real so that I could achieve real results in that, even though it was a test. Mm -hmm. So before I started working with clients, it's something that I wanted to make sure, okay, this works even in this market. So uh, because there's different areas that you can do SEO in like the affiliate um, and clients and then also helping them get like phone calls to their site. So a lot of your businesses like your AC repair or plumbing repair or water repair, those companies want to be ranked locally, of course, but they also want to be receiving phone calls to their business about the service. So one in particular big one is like roofing. So um, that's one of the successes I had was with a roofing company and being able to provide people to call that roofing company for that service. Just getting that phone to ring because when you get a roofing company and they get a service, one of those phone calls could be thousands of dollars for that client. Mm Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Then, uh, so those were some of your early successes. What about some of your early uh, ch- uh, challenges? What kind of challenges did you offer? Early challenges were actually being able to rank anything, right? <laughs> so <laughs> that that was the most difficult thing, and the biggest fear I had was, am I going to be able to do this? Is this something where I see these websites on the first page? And in the beginning, it was like, how in the world did they get there? And even after learning from these guys who knew how to do SEO, it still was like a big 
just putting all this stuff together in a big ball and just putting it all together and then trying to look at that ball and taking the things out and making sense of everything. Right. So they had some kind of roadmap, but it's not the same for every website. Mm -hmm. So you have a general concept of what you, you, um, you're doing, but that it was just that biggest challenge is it doesn't make sense. Right. (laughs) And just looking at it all and be like, there's so many things to do here. (laughs) Where do I start? What do I begin doing? And then as I started just working on those test websites and then getting clients, finding out, okay, this is the process that I need to take here. This is what needs to start in the beginning and just developing that process. So I think in the very beginning it was confusing, but when I had that process in place, that's when it started to iron out and I could actually make a smooth transition from help starting a client into actually ranking them in the search engines. Wow. Okay. And uh, what, was, what were some of your early fears then when you were first getting started? Okay. So my early fears was Google's, Google's going to find out what I'm doing and they're going to come to my house and they're going to like shut off my internet or something. right? <laughs> <laughs> but as I started working, I realized that Google really doesn't care. <laughs> they, they care that they're providing their customers with the best, right? So, when I take on a client, I make sure that they are the best at what they do. So, because I don't take every client that comes to my door because there's some clients that are providing a bad service to people and they come in and they say, Hey, um, there's something that's with uh, reputation management. So with those clients, especially it takes a lot of work to be able to help somebody's reputation. So those clients, um, I always make sure and look at their current reputation right now to look and see, okay, if I start doing work for this client, are they going to continue doing bad work for other people, right? Mm -hmm. Because then it's not going to work. So that was my biggest fear is actually, is Google going to come and try to stop me from what I'm doing? And the next thing is, is am I going to – de-index somebody's website. And that was one of the fears I had when I first started working with clients is the de-indexation. Um, I wanted to make sure that, do you know what that is, Kevin? No, I do not. Okay. So when you're, sorry. So what a de-indexation is, is when Google cuts you down for a penalty and they'll make it so that let's say if a client's ranking for um, dental implants, Las Vegas, and they get the index from the search engines, it doesn't matter what you do. You will not find it in the Google search engine. Their website is still up. Their website is still active and they might have people coming to their website from, let's say if it's posted on other websites and people click on it, but you won't be able to find it in the search engines. Kind of like being blacklisted. Like your, Google blacklisted. your Google blacklisted is pretty much what that is. So that was one of the fears I wanted to make sure I didn't do to my clients. Because if you get Google blacklisted or de-indexed, it's very difficult to get on Google blacklisted. Because <laughs> they, they look at your website like, okay, now we know something's going on and we don't like it. So you're basically not friends with Google anymore. <laughs> it's pretty much what happened. So you almost have to start from scratch with a whole new URL and a whole new yes. set of content. There's, there's things that you can do to try to get not Google blacklisted anymore, but it's very difficult once they blacklist you. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Never yeah. heard about that, but it, make, it makes sense. <laughs> yes. I mean, I mean, let's say you are constantly providing poor service, like you know, negative Yelp reviews or whatever. I, so I could see... Where, you know, because Google just wants to protect the public. Right. So they might do that if you got reviews. A lot of it is making sure that um, your content and links that are coming to your site are actually genuine and rele- relevant to what your business is. So we actually had a situation that we had um, one of our dentist clients who got spammed. And what this company or whoever it did, they sent 900 links to this website in like a time period of like maybe a month. So we were looking at their rankings and at first we thought, well, what's going on here? Is this some type of algorithm change that Google's going through? But they kept dropping and we're like, okay. So I did an analysis on the site again and realized somebody had spammed the website. All these links were 
going to bad pages on the website, but because it had the core domain of this business of the, of the dentist name, it just shot all of the rankings except their brand. So then what we had to do is we had to go and um, disavow all the links that were on there. So I had to go through and find all these 900 links, go into my Google analytics. That's why it's important to have Google analytics because you can disavow links on Google analytics. So these 900 links, I had to put them all into the disavow tool. So now Google says, okay, these links are not associated with this business anymore because it was kind of a, kind of like a game to figure out what actually happened. So and once I found out, of course, I let the client know. I said, okay, somebody's trying to harm your website, but we're going to fix it. So we fixed it, and now um, it was probably probably a month or two after we did that, they're starting to rank back again for what they were ranking for before. So that's why a lot of times, like, if you're not keeping track of different rankings and you're not paying attention to links coming into the site, then something will happen and you'll be like, well, what's going on? And if you don't know that information, then it'll just, you'll almost feel like you need to start over. Whereas you can just go through, look at all the links that were put on there from somebody who's trying to harm your business mm -hmm. and then just disavow them in the Google tool to make sure that Google knows, okay, these links coming in are not associated with the business. Okay, so it would be something like, because my website is kevinadunlap.com, so uh -huh. it would be something coming in like say kevinadunlap.com forward slash a dot html, which doesn't uh -huh. exist. Exactly. <laughs> So that's what they did is they just put a whole bunch of letters. That's actually what they did. Letters and number combinations with all the, the sites and it led to nothing on the website. But because all the site, it was just so many links coming in. Google had no idea what was going on so, at the time. So that, I think they're called broken links, correct? Yes. Yes. They are. Okay. Okay. Well, um, then what are this, what, what's going on now with you? What, what are some of your current successes that, that you're going through? current successes that I'm going through is actually just with the rankings with clients. So I've had a few clients now that we're ranking for and some of them uh, I've got, let's, for instance, I've got a dentist and eye doctor and a janitorial service that we've been working for for a while. And now that they've been with me maybe for almost over a year now, they're starting to see those results that I told them about in the very beginning. So now it's actually deliver time. They're actually seeing the results and they're getting really excited because they're on page one for these different words that are ranking and they've got different levels of service that they've actually um, came on with me at. And depending with SEO, a lot of people, feel they don't really know how to price it right so what I'll do is I take a client in and I give them different options to be able to do that so that they can work it into their budget but with these clients in particular we worked it into their budget and now with those rankings that they're looking for with searches of like 1300 per month or 700 per month they're starting to see those first page rankings start peaking so that they're starting to get those clients coming in, starting to get those results for their actual website. So now that this SEO form of marketing is actually working, now they see those results and they, they're really happy. So I actually received a, a few emails saying, wow, this is really working. I'm really happy that we're doing the service. And just having that um, – all that work that's been put in up until this point and it's starting to pay off because now the clients are really happy and they want to continue doing service. And that's when referrals start coming in. So with the beginning of the business and when I was actually doing um, a lot of things on my own, it was probably about a year of like studying and messing things up for myself. And then I started getting clients and, um, just working with people in the community and developing those relationships. And a lot of people think, Oh, I can just go um, rank my website and everything will be great. Right. You can have a first page ranking. And if you're not doing other forms of marketing as well, it's just, you want to have all of that together so that you're receiving the best benefit of everything. So that's what I'll tell my clients. This is only one form of marketing. And 
you need to incorporate that into other things that you're doing because this is going to be an additional benefit to what you're already working with. So it's just seeing those results come in and having those successes with my clients and giving them the service that I told them that I would give them is really where just being at an ethical point and giving them those results because a lot of times it seems invisible or magical whenever something like that happens and they're not seeing results and you're telling them it's coming. Just be patient. (laughs) Remember what we talked about in the very beginning. Don't worry. It's coming. (laughs) And that's what I was going to ask you because this is kind of like therapy is kind of like even like business coaching, like what I do. It's not an overnight success. It's not like, you know, here I'm going to hire you on a, on on a, today's a Monday. I'm going to hire you on Monday. And by Friday, I want to start seeing results. (laughs) Right. Exactly. So I make sure and tell the clients it's going to take months depending on what level they choose. It's, this is how long it's going to take so that they know, okay, they're not expecting results tomorrow. And yeah, they come in and they ask questions and I, say yes this is a normal process sometimes you'll see spikes here sometimes you'll see drops there it's just a normal process in google ranking your website so everything we're doing now you're going to see that benefit but you're seeing the pathway because i provide them a report every month showing them their rankings for the last month so they can go through and see okay what is this keyword doing right now so that they can do that so that they can see it Okay, and uh, do, do you have your clients do things themselves? Like, should they be out there blogging or should they be out there posting content on social media, link it to their website? Should they be actively doing their own stuff or is that stuff that you you be handling a lot of that? They should do that themselves. If they would like to pay me to do that service, I have a, a company I work with that I outsource to that would be able to help them with that and be able to write all their blogs because that's not something that I'll focus on because I'm focusing strictly on their SEO. So I partner with people that can do that. I can provide whatever service they want, but that doesn't mean I'm personally going to provide it to them. Right, because what do you know about dentistry or what do you know about? (laughs) Exactly. So I've got to get a professional that's going to be able to write a good article on that. And then I take that, let's say I'll take that article, optimize it to what's going to help them for their SEO, and then we can put it on their site or their blog or whatever it is we're putting it on so that they have that constant form of um, contact with their clients. Okay, well... Well, it sounds like you, you do a lot. There's a lot that needs to be done, and I know it's this is constantly changing. So it sounds oh, like, yeah, um, you, yeah that you're, you're definitely a professional in this industry. Um, so let me ask you this. Where do you see yourself in the next 12 or 24 months? 12 to 24 months, I see myself um, with um, business and SEO. It, it's coming to a point now where it's going to hit that breaking point. So where income's going to start multiplying by five and 10 times. And it's just up to that point waiting for that is really where it was because I'm developing those relationships in the community, also doing different advertising forms and being patient. So I see income levels, of course, increasing. I also see um, clientele um, being a lot happier with their uh, rankings, of course, because with, with time, they're going to increase their rankings and then just business is really going to start flourishing. It's really what I'm seeing because yeah, I like the nice things like the nice cars and the nice houses, but I know that um, it, it, those will be the side benefits of all this, but actually providing that good service to the clients is really what my focus is right now because if I don't provide that good service, I don't have a business, right? <laughs> that is very, very true. <laughs> So as we're wrapping up here, is there, are there any last minute things that you would uh, offer uh, to an entrepreneur that's maybe getting started or looking to scale the business? Um, yeah. So being an entrepreneur is not easy, right? It's something where you hear about all these people that have success. You look at their lifestyles and like your Bill Gates or whatever famous person or successful person that you follow and you see that what they have right now and look at it and be like, man, I wish I could have that. I wish I could do that. But you don't see where they started right now. Right. But when you look back at that point, you realize that entrepreneur was somebody who never quit. They took action on what they maybe thought wouldn't work or that they were afraid to do. So they just 
went out there and worked like the hardest person. They worked the hardest out of everybody that they knew. They just kept going, kept striving. And even though you have those difficult times, you have those times where you feel like you want to quit and you don't want to do this anymore, but you just keep going through. And um, there was actually a book I read by Mel Robbins and she talks about um, a simple five. It's like a, a step process where you count down from five all the way to one and you say, go. And that, that, what that does is that helps you take away that inability to go and do action. And at that point where you say go, you either choose to act on it or you choose not to act on it. But it's your responsibility and it's your opportunity whether you do it or not. So just going out there, being persistent, never quit, and just taking action. Because inaction is what really – slowed me down in my business because I honestly probably should have started working with clients sooner than I actually started. But being afraid that I might de-index their site or get them Google blacklisted is what held me back a little bit for good reasons, but it wasn't good enough to where that I shouldn't have been going out there and actually working with clients in the very beginning. Okay, so take action, take action now. Stop, yes, stop, exactly. stop sitting on your hands. <laughs> right. Right. Because there's a lot of business owners I talk to and they're like, well, I just can't do this, can't do that. And, and you know what? There's one thing that I've always heard. And if you tell yourself you can't do something, then I believe you. But if you tell yourself you can do something, I believe you too. So it's what you're saying to yourself and changing that mentality is really what helps you go further and perceive and, and just break through those points whenever it's bad times and difficult times. And you just say, I can do this. And you just keep going. Yeah. So it's all about the mindset and in my opinion, also a support system, having that in place. Exactly. Okay. Well, Richard, I do appreciate you being on the show. You've given some great information. I learned some stuff. I'm going to have to go change this Google <laughs> Analytics uh, plugin to get that on my website right now. Awesome. That's great. Uh, so thank you for sharing that. Now, if somebody wants to work with you, uh, what is the best way for them to contact you? The best way for them to contact me is through my website. Okay. Um, and that is risingaboveseo.com. And they can visit my website. It has my email and a phone number that they can contact me on there. Um, if they want um, a free analysis, it's a different website. And that website is discoveryform.net. So the, the, uh, your, your normal website is www.risingaboveseo.net dot com and for them to get an analysis uh, on their on their website to see how it, how it ranks they'll mm -hmm. go to www.discoveryform.net correct yep and once they uh, i guess they just put in their url uh, their their their, their um, domain name on there this um the analysis is actually an analysis that they can use that'll really help their business. It's something I do for free and it's by video. So they, it's going to take them about 15 minutes to fill out the form and it's going to give me some of that stuff we talked about with their website, uh, where they want to go, what their business is doing now and what they actually want to achieve with SEO. So that gives me all the pertinent information that I need to give them a proper analysis, letting them know, okay, here's where your business is now. Here's where it can be. Here's where your competitors are. And um, from where you told me you want to go, this is what can happen if you want to get there. Okay. And uh, once they do the 15 minutes, how long before uh, are they giving e immediate results or does that go to you and you do your own analysis yep. and you contact them? That goes them? directly to me and then I'll actually contact them and send them the video and say, here's your free analysis of your actual website. Okay. Awesome. Then I think everybody that's out there that's listening to this, I mean, uh, it doesn't matter if they're local, they could be even living in London. It doesn't really matter where, where their domain name is because this is global. This is internet. This is the internet. Right. So it doesn't really matter. But you, would you say within a 24, 48 hour turnaround time after they've um, yeah, generally, generally it's about, um, yeah, about 48 hours is when I'll go through and be able to do a good analysis for their site. 
Okay. Well, th- thank you, Richard. That's a, that's a nice giveaway that you're do- doing right there. And I think I'm going to be probably one of your first customers because <laughs> uh, I'm not going to be doing this before it's broadcasted. So. Awesome. <laughs> um, well, I do want to say, Richard, and I want to say thank you for being with us today. It's been a great pleasure. I know I've learned a lot. I know the, the viewers and the listeners have learned a lot. Uh, any last words before we go? Just remember that when you're looking for different um, options for SEO, just to be careful because like some of that stuff I told you about with de-indexation, there's some people um, that just don't care. They're just trying to sell you a service and they will just do whatever to your website. And then next thing you know, a few months later, you won't know what happened. So just be really careful when you decide to work with somebody with SEO uh, because it is a very technical field. It is a very a field that when you're working with your website, you put so much work into it. Don't just throw it away by paying for some um, $5 for a guy to put some links on your site because that can actually hurt you. So you have to be very careful. So don't always go with the cheapest person yet. Go with the right. person that, that, that can show that they, that they can give you good results. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, th- well, I do want to say uh, for the last time, Richard, thank you very much for being on the show. I really, really do appreciate it. And thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. It was great to be on here. It's great having you. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Life's Little Lessons with your host, author of Designing Your Own Destiny, Kevin A. Dunlap. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit KevinADunlap.com, Facebook.com slash KevinADunlap.author, and on Twitter at Kevin A. Dunlap. We'll catch you on the next episode of Life's Little Lessons.